According to a new study, Americans spend on average about $18,000 a year on non-essential items. As a Canadian, I can, unfortunately, confirm that most Canadians aren't far behind either. That means, every month, Americans spend almost $1,500 of their household budget on things they could easily live without. I'm sure you're already thinking of what you can do with that additional money. Invest, pay off debt, save for a house. But none of this is possible unless you get your life in order and start making smarter decisions. So, let's discuss how to do that in this video. Today I'm breaking down 10 things to stop wasting money on right now. You don't want to miss the ultimate money waster, so stick around till the very end. One place you can stop wasting your money is, well, your money management. Ironic, isn't it? Most people spend unnecessary money each month on banking fees, which can easily add up to hundreds of dollars per year. Whether that's a fee associated with not maintaining a minimum balance, overdraft fees or ATM fees, all those dollars add up and eat away at the interest you earn from your accounts. Look at your bank statements and highlight any fees you've paid over the last year. Then, look for a bank that'll give you the products you want without those fees. I promise they are out there. In 2022, there's absolutely no reason to be paying bank fees. Use a website like Bankrate to see the current interest rates and fees for dozens of banking products and services. Once you've stopped paying your bank fees, the next thing you want to stop wasting money on is extended warranties and extra insurance on large purchases. Allow me to bash on Apple for a second, because, well, it's kind of fun. If you decide to spend extra money to protect your 14-inch MacBook Pro with an extra warranty in Canada, that would set you back over $300 for a three-year warranty. I mean, that's enough to buy a brand new laptop from any other brands. Imagine paying thousands of dollars for a laptop, and then hundreds on top just to protect it in case you drop it, which you probably won't do. I'll pass. Everyone is trying to sell additional coverage these days, from smartphones to washing machines. But most of the time, this is a massive waste of money. And companies know this. The reason this business model is so profitable comes down to simple math. Over time, companies like Apple are able to collect a lot of data on their customers and products, so they have a pretty good estimate of how likely someone is to actually use their warranty. Let's take an example. Imagine that Apple knew that only 6% of customers who buy an extended warranty actually use it for their MacBook. Maybe they'll spill their coffee on it or make a drop test YouTube video. So for 100 MacBooks sold, only 6 customers would come back to have their laptop repaired without any extra charge. Let's also assume that Apple charges $300 for the extended warranty and it costs them $700 to do the repair. For 100 sales, they'll generate $30,000 in revenue 6%, so only 6 people use the warranty. So this would cost them a total of 6 times $700, which is $4,200. They profit a cool $26,000 on top of the money they make by selling everyone the MacBooks. That's why selling warranties is so extremely lucrative for businesses. To make matters worse for you, the customer, even if your product needs to be replaced or serviced, these warranties and insurance policies are so limited in their coverage that there's a slight chance they'll save you any money. If extended coverage is crucial to you, make sure to shop around for the best policy. For example, in the US, Verizon's device insurance costs about $20 a month for a new iPhone. Comparatively, you can purchase two years of Apple Care directly from the manufacturer for about $200. If you went with Verizon's policy, you'd end up spending more than double for two years of coverage. Avoid that massive L. If you don't trust yourself with being able to take care of your devices, just buy something cheaper and more durable. And if you're spending so much money on tech, why not make the most of free content online? This brings me to my next point. Stop paying for print newspapers and physical books. There is so much content available for free online that you can access it on anything with a screen. But if you're feeling a bit nostalgic, here's a reminder. A free library card from your local branch will give you access to millions of books, magazines, movies, and more on your phone. As a bonus, you don't have to worry about recycling newspapers daily or storing all of those books. Speaking of storage, that is something you need to stop wasting your money on right now. One in ten people pays for a storage facility for their belongings. Rent averages about $100 a month, with prices for large city units costing up to $300 a month. My question is, if you use something so infrequently that it remains in storage, do you really need it? Perhaps you need a visit from Marie Kondo to help you move on and declutter. Instead of paying to store things that you can quickly and affordably replace, should you ever need them, sell your stuff, pocket the profits, and if you've been watching this channel, then you know how much I love talking about investing and emergency funds. Sell your crap and put the money to good use. And stop paying for storage. Digital storage costs add up too. 
Instead of paying monthly for cloud storage for your massive amount of photos and videos, spend a few hours cleaning up your albums instead. Make it a habit to remove junk photos and videos every few weeks so you don't get overwhelmed by the thousands of screenshots you send your friends. By the way, it's kind of surprising that so many people are paying for storage units while also wasting money on the next item on my list, oversized housing. In the U.S., single-family homes average 2,300 square feet. In Canada, that number is 1,700. This irony of unused space runs even deeper when you realize that the average home is smaller in Canada, despite Canada being significantly larger in size than the U.S. But I digress. Both averages have increased substantially in the past 50 years, despite families getting smaller. Even apartments keep getting bigger, and it's easy to find two-bedroom units well above 1,000 square feet in suburban and rural areas. Most of us don't need this much space, which costs us a lot more. Larger housing means higher heating and cooling costs, more furniture to cover the empty space, higher maintenance costs, steeper property insurance, and more. Everything. Decide how much space you really need and save thousands of dollars each year. Not only will it save you money, but it will also give you peace of mind as well. When stocking your new smaller space, make sure you're not wasting money on the next item on the list. Name brand products. According to Consumer Reports, generic and name brand products are nearly always comparable in quality, but name brands will cost you about 20% more. And at the grocery store, skipping name brands can slash your bill by up to 45%. While you're at it, Make sure you're buying generic prescriptions and over-the-counter medications too. By law, these products must be as effective as name brands. So when you reach for Tylenol or NyQuil over the store brand option, you're literally throwing your money away. Fight back against the big corporations that charge a fortune and just buy the generic brands. Now, to further my previous point, if there are name brand or big ticket items you think you simply cannot live without, don't waste your money by buying these during non-sales times. A bit of planning can save you thousands of dollars. Most retailers offer sales on a predictable schedule, and certain items are cheaper across the board during certain months. Each year, NerdWallet publishes a month-by-month -month guide on savings for the year ahead. January and July are the best months of the year for sales in general, with most retailers offering their semi-annual deals during these months. If you want a more detailed look at when your favorite stores have sales, just Google it. I guarantee you someone else has already written a blog post about it. Welcome to the age of the internet. We've been waiting for you. When you're done shopping online for sales during the best months of the year, make sure you don't waste money on paying shipping fees. Try to shop from stores that offer free shipping with no minimum purchase, or take advantage of store pickup to score the online price without paying for delivery. And remember, don't assume that free shipping means it's the best deal. Sometimes you might be able to find the same product somewhere else that charges for shipping, but still ends up being cheaper overall. Compare across several sites to make sure you're getting the lowest price possible. Then search for free shipping codes or reach out to customer service and ask if they can make it happen for you. Most companies value customer retention more than customer acquisition, so use that to your advantage. Tell them that you're a loyal customer and that you'll go to a competitor if they don't give you the deal you deserve. And if you cannot avoid a minimum purchase to snag free shipping and you're shy, say $50 to qualify, Here's a simple hack to finesse the system. Just add something else to your order that costs $50 or more to get you qualified for free shipping, and then you'll sell that item or gift it to someone to justify the cost. Speaking of justifying the cost, it's time to look at credit cards. Many of the most popular rewards cards come with steep annual fees. It's easy to get tempted by promises of extra points, perks, and freebies, but it's even easier to forget to use those incentives each year. You may end up paying hundreds of dollars in annual fees on cards you're not getting value from. Look over your credit cards and check to see if the value you actually use each year outweighs the annual fees. If not, it's time to switch to a no-fees card. Paying for interest on those same cards is another source of massive waste each year. Pay off your debt in full at the end of each billing cycle. Make sure your balance is at zero before the promotional period expires for large purchases offering a limited time 0% APY, or annual percentage yield. Now, let's talk about the number one thing to stop wasting money on. Starting today, due to the global crisis over the past three years, we all got used to paying additional fees for easier access to goods and services. Think about how much you spend on Uber Eats deliveries to your doorstep. Save hundreds of dollars each month by eliminating these unnecessary extras. 
Stop paying for restaurant and grocery delivery and stop on the way home from work instead. While you're at it, cut out conveniences that you've been tempted by long before the illness, like picking up snacks and drinks at the gas station, where they are sometimes double what they cost at a grocery store. Take public transportation, walk or ride a bike instead of using Uber. It's so much cheaper and can even benefit your health. Cancel your lawn care subscription and spend an hour a week doing it yourself. You might consider buying high quality electric lawn care equipment. They cost a bit more up front, but save your money and your back in the long run. Create a YouTube playlist with your favorite workout videos instead of paying for a monthly subscription to Peloton or Beachbody. You pay more for convenience across all areas, so there's a lot of money being wasted here. Make use of all the free resources that are available and your bank account will notice the difference. Ironically, convenience fees are very inconvenient for your bank account. If you have ideas for other garbage to stop buying this year, drop a comment below. Click this video on your screen to become even smarter with your money.